Oh, hey, didn't see you there. What's up, guys? Welcome back to this episode of the Road to Redemption podcast. I'm, as always, your grateful host, Cam Williamson. It's a daggone pleasure to be back with you, huh? You know, we're back. It's spooky season. Your boy's excited. Can you see my candles? Like, you know, hey, what's up? Today, I'm excited to bring you a different uh, energy, a different vibe, a different message. Um, I've cried the last two podcasts. Your boy's been emotional, but I've been doing some, some spiritual, emotional healing, you know? And you guys are a part of my life. The raw, unabridged, unapologetic version of that. And I want to thank you guys for that. I want to thank you all so much for all the support that you've been sending me. Um, all across, thank you. So let's get into it. Today, how do you get your life back? How do you push past pain? How do you use your pain as fuel, right? These three kind of subcategories that I just broke this down into, how do you get your life back? How do you push past pain? And how do you, you know, make your pain work for you instead of against you? I, for a long time, was under the impression that your pain was there to uh, stop you and to, you know, halt you in life and make you really stop and contemplate, what am I doing so wrong that I feel this way, right? Sometimes we're wrong. I tried to go the antidepressant route and it did not work for me. It led back to, you know, me drinking, which, you know, is no good for my life. So I obviously, just an update on that, guys. I don't drink anymore, obviously, still. I'm, you know, coming up on, I think it's over a month now that I've been sober and stuff. So it's cool. It's, uh, it's hard, not going to lie, because you learn, and this is, we're going to kind of get right to it. You learn very quickly where the causes of your pain come from when you have nowhere to hide from them, right? A lot of us go through life and we feel things. We have sensations, we have thoughts, we have reactions to those two things that come so natural to us, we don't even think, they're just... And then, especially in addiction, you have thoughts that mix with emotions, that turn into actions, that usually turn into regrets, right? Uh, drinking, I always regret because just physically I feel terrible. Uh, I, I don't, I don't want to say that I regret what I do and say when I drink because I don't, but I regret how I communicate. And sometimes because I don't remember everything that I say, I have to wonder like, well, how did things get left? Or how, how, how does this person see me now? Because the last time we spoke, you know, I was inebriated. That all becomes pain. That all becomes trauma that you build inside of yourself. And it becomes resentment for yourself, right? If you sit and live in that. But how do we push past it? You have to learn. And life is going to teach you this, whether you like it or not. I promise you that. Whether you're a teenager listening to this, which I don't know how many teenagers I have in my audience, but love to have you here. <laughs> if you're here, <laughs> thanks. Uh, you know, it, it doesn't matter, man. People get hurt at, at all ages in life, and they have to learn. This is one lesson if I could give back to myself when I was younger. When you're hurt, sit and do nothing. My father used to tell me this all the time. When you're emotional, do nothing. When Cam, when you're emotional, which you are oftentimes, do nothing. If you do nothing, you have every opportunity in front of you. If you start doing a bunch of shit, of, you start closing doors and you start trying to play puppet master of the overall outcome of things. You should not do that. You should not want to do that because 
if my life can teach you all anything, it's that if you try to do everything your way, the way you think it should be done the first time, boy, howdy, are you in trouble. You are going to go and crash so hard, which is fine. This is fine. It's a part of life. You have to crash and burn. You have to, especially if you're going to be successful, because listen to anybody who is successful. They'll tell you, I failed 80 billion times before I made that one thing that everybody knows. You have to crash and burn. But if you're not able to sit in that fire and go, what led me here? How did I get here again? And then start to look for your patterns. What in the last five days got me to where I am? Good or bad, but right now we're talking about pushing past pain. So anything that maybe you've done that caused yourself some pain or a situation in your life that's causing you pain still. In the last five days, what have I done? To either rectify the situation or if it cannot be rectified, what have I done to heal myself from that? And I, I can I can just feel a lot of people pulling back and going, well, there's sometimes there's nothing you can do about some things, right? Sometimes you can't rectify a situation and sometimes you can't, uh, you know, whatever. Well, first off, if it means enough to you, you will. If it's a situation where you've done something or you've put yourself in such a bad way where you have to own up to something a lot of times that takes you sitting in your own bullshit and i'm talking about all of it guys i'm talking about all your own bullshit which sucks it sucks because you can't lie to you i can lie to you i can lie to every one of y'all i could be a big fucking liar and all this could be a big sham right i could it's not but it could you when you sit with you that is the most romantic heartbreaking date you will ever have when was the last time you sat with yourself no tv no phone no kids no spouse no distractions you just sat in your own bullshit listening to your own shit when was the last time you did that i bet it's been a while If you're not on an active routine every single day to check yourself on your own bullshit, which is super important, because here's the problem with people like myself who are highly emotional, we tend to formulate a life around us that's going to keep us safe. And I say safe with the sarcastic bunny ears because it's true. It's bullshit. Safety is nothing more then finding a spot in life that you're willing to tolerate and go, I'm good. Safety and settling are very little different, right? Once you come to these realizations of, I have to feel this pain, right? Nothing anyone says or does or anything I smoke or drink or whatever is not going to change what is right in front of me today. That's another big thing I want us to focus on. What is in front of you right now? As you're listening to my voice, look around you. What's around you? Do you want that to be there? Do you love what you see? When you wake up in the morning, does that set your soul on fire? Or are there some things that need some alterations in it? Every good outfit needs alterations from time to time. Look at your life. Look at your pain. Look at the things that make you want to stay in bed and stop chasing after life. The life that you know deep down you deserve to live. And you have to make friends with that shit, man. If you don't make friends with the pain that caused you to be who you are today, one, you'll never know who you truly are. 
you'll never know what actually lives inside of you because guess what it sucks and i get it it's cliche but your pain is what forms you to be who you are if you're not able to overcome the tragedies and the heartaches of life this life is going to destroy you. It's going to. And because it tries hard a lot of times. But if you look, when your life is being destroyed, it's oftentimes caused by our own behaviors. Us getting away from what we know to be our true self. And the longer time we do that, the more damage we cause. I'm a firm believer. Every thing in life can be rectified until you die when someone's soul leaves this earth on a physical realm it's over it's done you can't make any peace in that situation anymore for you the listener of this who's hurting and who's trying to figure out why why did this happen it could have gone so many ways whatever your situation is why did this happen to me i can't give you that answer i don't know because i don't know your situation but here's what i can tell you sit with yourself and you're not gonna like all the answers you find because some of them are going to be very self-critical and they're very hard to hear. But it's the ultimate version of who you're trying to become, talking to who you are now. And they're trying to give you the only kick in the ass that you're actually going to listen to. Because if you keep listening to the people around you, you're going to keep fucking your life up. And that's a promise and that's on God. You will keep fucking your shit up if you keep listening to people that are babying your bitch ass and that's myself included i stopped calling some people i stopped reaching out to a lot of people for advice and i stopped giving people act you know active uh, ability to get to me why because every time i do and I think that, you know, I've got a connection with somebody where, you know, uh, you're listening out of my best interest. There's usually some sort of fucking agenda. And if you listen, when you talk to people, you can feel it in an instant. What is this person trying to do? Are they trying to listen? Or are they trying to check a block of saying they were there for me? And then move on to whatever their thing is. Now, I'm not saying every conversation's got to be fully centered around you. But if you're going through a hard time in life, y'all. Even if you have people in your life who you think you can trust on, on everything. I advise you to spend some fucking time alone, man. Because nothing resonates more with me than you are born alone given there's a room full of people there but guess what a lot of people were born to a room full of people and then passed off to people they weren't born to you're born in this world alone you go through every single day of your life the fuck alone everything that you feel every second of your life is spent with you so you got to learn how to deal with you the ugly side of that shit, too, because a lot of this time on this show, y'all, I try to keep it upbeat, and I try to keep it real positive, and I try to keep it, you know, that everything is always all right. Well, guess what? We all have parts of ourselves that are fucking grimy, y'all. They're dirty. Not saying you're a bad person, but I am saying we, as human beings, are envious, and we are jealous, and we are... You know, we're a lot of things. We're violent by nature. Some of us more than others. And some of us are passionate to a scary level, you know. And you have to be able to get that shit under control. Because if you don't, and I think about this a lot, and this is just me being real with y'all. If you don't get that shit on the leash and get your life under control... 
you're going to end up being like, and this is not a judgment. This is an observation. You're going to end up being one of the homeless people on the side of the road. Screaming to themselves about the way things should have been. Talking to somebody that's not there. Doing all these drugs to try to fill a void inside of yourself. That's not even really there. I'm going to end on this. My eyesight's terrible. I think it says 15 minutes. I'm going to end on this. This is your life, yeah? You had the choice to click on this video and watch this. And you're trying to gain something from it, which I hope you have up to this point. Tomorrow when you wake up, you're going to make the choice to get up, make coffee, and do whatever it is that you're going to do. Nobody has the right and can tell you how you feel, how you should feel, what your life should look like, or how long it could take you to get over some shit. The fourth one I want to put a caveat on. Because I love you and because I care about you, Give yourself a time limit. Hey, man, I'm going to feel this. I'm going to feel all of this. Sometimes you might do it. Hey, I'm going to feel this for two weeks, and then I might need to bottle it back up for a little bit. Or my recommendation would be I'm going to feel this, and until I'm not struggling to feel it anymore, I'm going to block out time in my schedule to meditate and connect to what I believe my source of being is. And I'm going to let the chips fall where they may because if you try to keep controlling situations, you're going to end up right back where you are now. Lost, scared, hurt, trying to figure out what the fuck went wrong when I can tell you what went wrong. You, me, and everyone else in life Settles for shit that's comfortable to him. Staying in bed. Not going back to the gym. Not talking to people. Not journaling like you're supposed to. Not doing the work that you know deep inside of yourself you're supposed to be doing. It's easier to sit around and fuck off. I just encourage y'all, don't do that. Because one day of doing that turns into... It could be years. And I promise you guys to turn, and it's different for everybody, to hit the brakes on that train when you're going down a slippery slope. Oh, boy. Those wheels get greasy. And the the brakes, you know, they don't work so good. The train's getting old. <laughs> you know, I'm 30 years old almost, man. I, I, old habits don't die hard for the kid, but I am a person who... I have to feel it with every being of my intuition for me to really get it, right? If I don't feel it with every cell of who I am, I can't get it. So sometimes I trip in real life because, you know, I'm trying to figure shit out and I'm trying and I care a lot about a lot of shit and I'm trying to figure it out and I'm struggling to go, well, I, I can't prioritize all these things in just this one moment. I need some time. But who I am, I don't want to lose anything. So I'm constantly kind of in that FOMO state, that fear of missing out, where I'm going, well, uh, let me do this, 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 just so I can not lose anything else, and bang, there's the source of pain. Abandonment, you know, not wanting to be alone. And guess what? We all end up alone. I hope that you, whoever you are listening, have a lot of love in your life. I hope uh, I hope you're not hurting. I hope you're here because you're having a great time and life is good. And, uh, you know, you're here to check on the kid. I'm good working on me and uh, trying to become the best version of myself that I absolutely can be. And I can, I can genuinely say for the first time in my life, it's for me. And I don't feel bad saying, you know, this time is not for my kids. You know, I got sober the first time for my kids. 
uh, it's not for anybody. It's because I finally want to like and love who I see in the mirror every day. And I don't want to keep avoiding eye contact with myself because of who I know I truly am and how I truly feel. That's is it, Guys, don't go through life like that. Don't go through life like that. You don't have to. You can do other things. You can make other choices. You can choose to love yourself even if it's in the most unconventional way possible, right? Man, I hope I know you guys know how much I love you. Uh, I love this show. I feel like we've got some real fire and passion burning behind this show now. Uh, I, I feel it, and I hope you all feel it too. Please keep sharing the show and uh, liking it. Got some big stuff coming up that, that I'm working on, and uh, can't wait to share it with you. See you guys soon.